Firmware updates to 1.14 for the Anytone 878 Plus DMR Dual Band HT. Today on Ham Radio 2.0. Okay, guys, good afternoon. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. Uh, I'm Jason, KC5HWB. Uh, please click on subscribe below if you've never watched this video before, but I know that most of you have watched this channel before. This video is brand new. <laughs> so you've never watched this video before. Uh, okay, so the, the Anytone 878 Plus radio is the, is the hottest and greatest and latest and most talked about radio that's out right now for dual band DMRHT in the amateur radio world, especially in the USA. Uh, because it incorporates, uh, it's one of the first radios to ever come out of China t to incorporate Bluetooth. So I did a video a while back, and I'll put that uh, linked right here where I, I showed you how to connect. It comes with a, a Bluetooth button that's enabled for PTT. It's got a Velcro stra strap on it that you can wrap around your finger and use. So if the radio is on your hip, on your belt, or sitting over in the other room somewhere and you hear it, you can talk into it like that. So it kind of makes it... Uh, it kind of makes it neat like that. Um, actually, I think you have to have the headset on also, but most of these headsets are receive only, so you've got the PTT where you can PTT back and forth anyway. Anyway, so multiple options for that. There's multiple options for using that and doing that whatever. So uh, firmware, as most radios do, they come out with new firmware, and they fixed some bugs, and they added some new features. And one of the new features uh, about firmware version 1.14 which is the latest and greatest at the time of this recording, which is, if you go out and look on a few different websites out there, you can't even find it yet. So I'll put it a link in the description below where I can upload it because it is an official release, and I was given permission by the powers that be to share this with you. So it's got an updated version of the CPS and an updated version of the firmware, firmware for the radio, firmware for the Bluetooth, firmware for the GPS, I think. So there's different firmwares in there. Today we're going to update the firmware for the radio itself, and it's going to add some nice new colors to the text on the screen. So check this out real quick. So I did a read of my radio where you can see this is the stuff I have in it right now. I'm working on an extensive code plug and you'll be seeing some videos on that upcoming. One thing about the Anytone, you do have to set the COM port generally. There's only one option in here. This was not, I had to set this before I read the radio in the background here. This was not set, it was not highlighted. So I had to highlight it and click OK and then it read from the radio just fine. It won't do that automatically like it does on some other models, which is okay, whatever. But then, uh, then the, the, the zip file had this um, PDF file in it. The zip file looks like, let me see. The zip file, if you go here and there, uh, I extracted it. Um, if I go, go over to my OneDrive, software any tone that right there that official release 1.14 official release is the official release <laughs> of that firmware and if you extract that then you can then it will look like i mean you can extract it to i just created a folder called 1.14 and that's everything that's inside the zip folder that I extracted, and one of those uh, things is programming guides, and you've got some PDF files in here. If you open up this one that's called this one, it looks like that one. Above it's in a different language. 868 UV programming, no, no, that's not it. Program oh, programming, no, that's not what we want. We want update instructions. Okay, I apologize. It's not, it's not program, it's update instructions. Firmware update instructions right here. You click on that, and you get this file right here, and I've zoomed it in a bit. So this talks about the COM port. Then you want to connect your cable to the PC. Always turn off GPS and APRS in the menu before doing any update to prevent the radio from going into transmit while it's connected to the PC as it may cause CPU or IC damage. So I've already done that at the time of this recording. Uh, we're going to go down here, and I'm going to switch it over. Nope. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, let's switch over this camera here, and I'm going to, the radio's powered off right now. Like the instructions say, I'm going to hold down the PTT and the blue button here at the same time, at the same time while powering it on. If I can reach it and talk into the microphone at the same time. 
And now I've got the flashing red LED on the top, and there's nothing on the screen. Just like that. So it has to be in programming mode, just like that, before you shoot the firmware into it. If you don't, uh, if you don't put it in programming mode, sometimes people, and I don't think the Anytone radios do this, but sometimes I'll get, I'll see people on Facebook and they'll like, I did an update on my firmware and now the screen looks like a bunch of pixels. It's not text, you can't read it. it. Some people say it's blurry. It just looks like a bunch of wingding characters, if you remember that font from way back in the day. It just looks like totally garbled. You can't tell what it is at all. That's because you updated your firmware without putting the radio in the DFU mode first. Okay, I've never seen an Anytone do that. The TYTs are real famous for it. I did see an HD1 do that one time. All you do, put the radio in the DFU mode, reshoot the firmware into it, done. You're fine. So... I don't know what the Anytone does. I haven't tried it. Maybe it does the same thing. Maybe it won't let you do it. I don't know. But let's try this here. We're going to go back over to the CPS. And again, this is where I already read my code plug from. And I'm going to go to... Let's see, where is it? Uh, firmware. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so tool, firmware and icon update, open update file... And I'm going to go find that folder that I just extracted I showed you a second ago. Uh, not there. Desktop radio 1.14. 1.14 firmware. It's a .spi file. Right there. File open succeed, su successed. That makes no sense. The tense is wrong. So we got the 878 and the version 100. Duplex comes. I'm not changing any of this stuff. Right here, I'm going to go to right, right data, yep, and you see the status bar, it's changing right here. The radio itself doesn't look any different, it's still got the flat, actually I, I take that back. The flashing on the LED slowed down, still flashing. Yeah, see there it goes, turned on, turned off, so it's not flashing as quickly as it was before but it is still going. So we're, uh, the screen's telling me we're at about 50% now. And just leave it alone. It's probably a good idea that you actually don't uh, move it around a bunch in case there's like, in case you don't want. Make sure your USB is plugged in real tightly to both the side of the radio and to the, to the computer. And don't wave it around a bunch because if there's a short in the cable and whatnot, you might foul something up. You don't want to get a messed up firmware on the radio. Write complete, we see right there. Click OK to that and exit. And I'm going to go back over here. And I didn't even, I didn't turn it off. It rebooted itself. So I didn't do that. I was going to show, I was going to show you guys to myself uh, shutting it off and rebooting it but I didn't do it did that by itself so that's good that's good put that back on real quick I'm gonna zoom down here right there just like that nope wrong way and that is what the screen looks like now hopefully that's not too washed out because I do have my lights shining at it yeah there you go that's a good one right there so the 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 text for where it says Texas statewide and Tarrant those are Tarrant is my channel name on the bottom band and you can see the bottom band right now is the one that's selected because those are the larger text um, I think if I yeah so P1 is I have currently have it programmed you can switch back and forth that's the top band selected Texas statewide is the name of the talk group I'm on um, I've got it named wrong. KC5HWB is the actual name of the zone, and it's flipping back and forth between worldwide and the zone. That's because I have this, I have that channel programmed wrong. Let me go. Um, okay, so that's what it should do. So WARG in red at the top is my current, currently selected channel. KC5HWB in white underneath that is the currently selected zone. And the currently selected zone flips back and forth between the actual name of the digital contact that you're using. Okay? So in other words, 
you can check to see. I'm not hitting that. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing it. So you can check to see to make sure that your channel name in red above matches your digital contact name below it. As long as you know what you named your own digital contacts in the radio, I guess. Same thing for the one below. Go down here. I call the channel Tarrant. And in my digital contacts, it's called Local 10. And KC5HWB is the zone that it's currently in. So those kind of rotate back and forth so that you can keep track of what is what. This text is actually more of an orange. It's showing red to me on the computer screen right now. But when I put it like this, it kind of washes it out. So I don't know how it's going to look in the final video. That's pretty close right there to act what it actually looks like. So it added some more things besides just that. Uh, the neat colored text is um, the most noticeable update to the firmware, but it's not the only thing it added. But it is, for all intents and purposes, the, uh, the most noticeable thing because it puts some of your text in, in the uh, screen in color. I don't know if you can change that color. That's a good question. Now that I think about it, let me see if you can change that color or not. Go back over here to the menu. The menu. Make sure it's in there. Yeah, that's good. Menu. No. Settings. Radio set. No, it doesn't look like you can change the color. Unless there's a way to do it on the back. You might be able to do it in the CPS. I have not looked. Talk group SMS call zone. Zone. Edit channel. Save. Uh, edit name. I could change the name there. Confirm. That's my KC5HWB is the repeater that I've got set up. I just named it my own call sign because that's the call sign on the repeater. And a channel. And these are all the different channels I have currently in that zone. Back. But it doesn't look like there's no, there's any way to actually change the color on the text. So there might be a way to do that on the back end that I've, I'm unaware of. But eh, maybe something for another video. So anyway. That's, that firmware's out. Um, as far, I, I've seen one or two other of the YouTube guys do a video on this, but I haven't seen this available for download anywhere. I um, was provided the firmware because I have a YouTube channel. That's basically it. <laughs> so, which is probably how the other YouTube guys got it. So 73 guys who uh, click, look at the link below in the YouTube description, download the firmware, the new CPS, update it. Um, let me know if you like it. Let me know what you think. And um, we'll see you next time.